we want to continue with this idea of connectivity on Pandora, that we are all connected, whether it's through AWA or uh, other ways, and to remind people here that we are connected and that our actions have an impact on people around us and the world around us. John, let me tell you, I almost feel that James Cameron shot this movie on another planet. It is beautiful, it's immersive, it's gorgeous. Um, can you talk to me about the world building process from development to the script and then also with shooting the actors with these virtual cameras? You nailed it around the head. The world building starts right with the script. And we had our choice. Where do we want to play the, these movies? P other people might want to go to a water planet for oceans or a snow planet for ice. We said, use Pandora as a metaphor for the world in which we are in. And we defined our story and then we challenged our designers to look at real world things that could be inspirations for creating a world that most audiences couldn't even imagine. And then we challenged Weta Effects to deliver that at a photo real level where people will question, well, what oceans did they go to to do this? What did they do to do that? And, and create something that I believe is a must see on the big screen oh, yeah. experience. Easily. Now, I like. I know that uh, that James is a. Uh, he, he's very knowledgeable about the ocean, and he's a big advocate advocate for conservation. Can you talk to me about how the ocean inspired uh, this world of Avatar that we're seeing and this new culture? Well, look, I think you know our world inspires so much. Uh, both Jim and myself are avid scuba divers. Uh, Jim has also ch ch gone to the Marianas Deep, and and yep. you know, the, but going on trips like we did to Truck Lagoon where we scuba dived both during the day and at night, and we saw the, the difference between the two. The idea of being able to recreate that for other people who can't experience what we were lucky enough to experience, except do it on steroids. Yes. That, that's really what we, we want to do, to take those personal experiences and offer them to audiences. I know that you guys have a, a lot of Avatar movies planned, and I think that you guys have like three more scripts essentially done. How important is it for you guys to lay out the story first before you get into production and start shooting? People say, you know, what took so long? The first thing that took time was writing four scripts. Sure. We couldn't just write one and go, okay, we're satisfied. We had to write all four. Why was that important? Several reasons. One, we wanted our actors to know where their characters go because the decisions they make early on are gonna impact later decisions. Then there were logistical reasons why in our story, let's just talk about the kids. Yeah. We know the kids grow up in real life. Well, if movies two and three, they're basically the same age, we had to shoot that all at the same time. So it was very important for us to define those scripts at a level that Jim would be happy to direct them. Right, now I, I related to these characters so much. It's been 13 years since the original. I was 27 years old at the time. Now I'm 40 with a, with a seven-year-old daughter. So I completely related to these characters. Uh, and at the center of this story, it's really about family. Yes. What does that mean to you? And how do we see uh, Jake Soley and Natiri grow uh, in that process? One of the great things that Jim Cameron always does is write universal themes into his movies. And there's no more universal theme than family. Right. At the center of these movies is, is the Sully family. We saw in the first movie, Jake and Natiri fall in love. And now they've had children, but they are not perfect parents. They are parents who, ha who have to find out how to really, what does it mean to parent? What are the lengths that you go to to, to make sacrifice? Also, they're in a mixed race family. Right. All of those dynamics and how does that impact their kids? But it's not just told, I think, from the parents' perspective. We have characters that we've spent time developing their stories that are teenagers, right. struggling to find their own place in this world. Uh, what is their identity? How many teenagers are going through that? So I think to me, you know, movie going is, is an experience that is sometimes done alone, but oftentimes done in a shared, and, and people will identify differently with each one of these characters. But family is important, and also they become refugees. Right. Where they're forced to flee and seek refuse with a clan. They're Navis, just like we're all human, but they look different. Their skin is different, their bodies have developed differently. And it was very important for us to introduce that idea to audiences, that you know, don't judge people by how they look, you have to look inside of them. We have an expression, inate kamea, I see you. 
And to me, that means so much more than literally seeing someone. Right. And that's what these movies are about. You've worked with James a ton in the past, and uh, he's evolved as a director. Can you talk to me about his evolution as a director and how you've seen him evolve throughout this process? I think the way Jim has first involved more than as a director is as a person. Right. When I met him, you know, originally in 1994, um, he wasn't a father of a family structure. Now he's a father in, in a family structure, and that you now see represented in these films. But what Jim also does, he never rests on the laurels of his past. He challenges himself and he challenges the others around him to progress things, to raise the bar. And that's one of the really exciting and daunting things about working with Jim. Uh, but what, what happens is the people around us, they find that they can do things they never knew they can do, and it makes our movies better. I was talking to Kate Winslet, and she said that um, acting in this film – especially with the underwater capture, was one of the most freeing experiences and really truest forms of acting that she's done. Can you talk to me about shooting uh, some of these underwater scenes? I guess really capturing is what it is, as the underwater scenes, and then the uh, virtual cameras and how all that works. We wanted to create an actor-director-centric process when we set out to make the first avatar and continue with the second avatar. So we created what we call virtual production where the director and the actor are in what we call a volume for performance capture. That performance capture can be above the water, on a stage, or below the water. And in that moment, we're not waiting for lighting. We're not waiting for a dolly track to go down. It's Jim working with the actors and the actors working with each other to give us the best performances. Once we have those performances, our editors then put together you know, a cut and we look at what we think are the best performances. Then a month later, a, two months later, a year later, we go back and say, play back those selected best performances. And Jim picks up a virtual camera. And when he looks through the lens of the camera, it's as if not the actor is standing there right in front of him, their character is standing. And then on this barren stage, he creates the shots, but when he looks around the stage, he doesn't see the stage, he sees the world of Pandora. And all the time, we take the initial performance, the reference cameras that we shot of the actors, and carry that all the way through the pipeline to make sure that when you see it in the, on the big screen, it's Kate's performance, it's right. Zoe's performance, it's Sigourney's performance. That is incredible. Now. The world of Pandora, oh my God, it's so, so beautiful. We obviously see uh, the water and the reef people here. Um, what other parts of Pandora are, are you excited to explore in the future? One of the things I tell people is we could spend our whole life traveling Earth and not see all of the wonders it holds, sure. both from a location standpoint and from a cultural standpoint. So what I'm excited about as we move on in the sequels each sequel will take us to new places. Each sequel will introduce us to new cultures and new clans of Navi. And to me, that's exciting because, again, it allows us to reflect on our world. And throughout the process, we want to continue with this idea of connectivity on Pandora, that we are all connected, whether it's through Awa or uh, other ways, and to remind people here that we are connected and that our actions have an impact on people around us and the world around us. The last question I have for you, what has been the biggest challenge of bringing The Way of Water, Avatar The Way of Water, to the screen? The biggest challenge of The Way of Water is right in the title, water. No one had ever done performance capture before. No one, when they work with actors, has really ever asked them to do free breath holding. Right. And we had to do that, so we hired this gentleman by the name of Kirk Crack, who is its world-renowned free dive instructor. And I remember Sigourney going, Jim, I can't hold my breath for 20 seconds. Day one with Kirk, she got up to over a minute and a half. Kate ended up doing close to seven minutes. Yeah. And out of that, though, we wanted to also then take the cast to Hawaii for a rehearsal there because we're on our stage where we're doing our performance capture. So we went out and free dove the, the sh shallow reefs of, of Hawaii as a sense memory experience. But then we donned scuba gear and we did what might be perhaps the most Pandoran-like thing you could do on Earth. We went on a night dive, and we were sitting 30 feet below the surface of the water in the dark with lights just shining up. And out of the abyss comes these Pandoran-like creatures, giant manta rays. Wow. 
Oh my goodness. And they are swimming right around us, circling. The cast is reaching up, touching their bellies as they swim over. When we finished, we, we had trouble getting Cliff Curtis to come up because he just wanted to stay down there. But when you see the film and you see Sigourney as Kiri on her first swim and a Pandoran stingray swims by her and she reaches out to touch it, she's conjuring up what she experienced that night. Well, look, John, congratulations on the film. This is such a great story and visual. I mean, it's a masterpiece, achievement. Thank you for your time. I really appreciate you. Thank you for you. your time and thank everybody at Screen Rant.